Yo, I'm Saxon with Guy in a Cube, and in this video, we are looking at everything about build permissions, what the heck they are, why I care about them, and how do you manage it? Let's do it. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. All right, build permissions. What the heck are they? Build permissions specifically are tied to the feature shared data sets. So if you've heard that concept of shared data sets, that means that I can actually go work with data sets in a given workspace, create some reports, and stick that report in another workspace. That's the general idea of shared data sets. And so in order to create a report off of a shared data set or enable to share a data set, I have to provide build permissions for a given user or group or whatever. So the why on this one is really about how do I reduce the data silos in my organization and reuse existing data sets for reports all across my organization. This is really, really important when we're talking about just content creation and working with data without duplicating a bunch of stuff, right? All right, so how do I get build permissions? All right, enough of all this talking, let's go over to my laptop and take a look at how we can do that. There's a couple different ways that you can actually get build permissions assigned to you. The first way is just being a member of a given workspace. And so if I go to access, and if a given user is member, contributor, or admin, they're gonna have build access to data sets inside of this workspace, right? So that's the first one. The second way is I can actually publish an app. So within an app, if I go to permissions, you'll see options here to say, allow the users to connect to the app's underlying data set using the build permission. So you can control from an app publish perspective whether folks will be able to use the data set that's exposed in this app with build permissions. And so that would mean anyone in this access list would then have build permissions and be able to create reports off of this given data set. So number three is I can actually share a report with someone. So if I go and share my AdventureWorks report, here you will also see allow users to build new content using the underlying data set. So as part of share, I can provide build access to the underlying data set of that report. The last way that I can provide build access is if I go to the data set and I go to the ellipsis and I come down to manage permissions, I can explicitly provide build access to someone or I can also remove build access for someone. So let's say uh, I wanna add a given user and we'll say, Good old Michael here. And then I can actually say, do they have reshare rights on this artifact? And also do they have that build permission? So allow recipients to build new content from the underlying data set. When I go add, I will then see here that they have read, reshare, and build permissions. Now let's say I wanted to remove those permissions from someone. Let's say Jane Doe, who's got read access to this database, uh, but I actually, I can individually remove the build access for them. You'll see that build disappeared, or I can just remove access altogether. And I can say, yep, remove it from the report as well. Bam, they are gone. And of note, Jane Doe was not actually a member of the workspace itself. Jane just had specific permissions on this given data set and report. Awesome, so that's how I can actually assign and manage build access, right? So I can do it in one of those four ways, or I can actually go into the manage permissions of a given data set and remove those items for given users. One thing you'll also note here is that you will see a specific call out if they got the build access from an app perspective versus something in the workspace directly. You won't necessarily be able to tell if they have build access from either directly adding it or being a member of the workspace versus did they get it from a share perspective? Like, did I share that report? It, that you can't tell from this, but you can tell if it came from a published app or not. All right, so now what does this look like on the other side? So let me go and open Power BI Desktop. And I'm signed in as Michael, and what I can do here is go to Get Data, Power BI Datasets, and I will see AdventureWorks listed here. One thing to note is Michael is a Power BI Pro user. I'll talk about free users here in a second. So let me go ahead and select this given data set, and bam, now I'm connected live to a given data set in that app navigation workspace that I had. Michael's not a member of that workspace, but I do have build rights on that data set. And so when we go to that get data screen, you will see any data set that either is in your personal My Workspace 
in workspaces you have access to and or any data set that you have build permissions on. Now let's go ahead and do some stuff here. So let's go ahead and we'll grab total sales. All right, bam, we've got a simple report here. Let me go ahead and we'll just save this out. And then I wanna publish this. So now my Michael only has access to my workspace and also a workspace called new workspace. So we'll go ahead and publish it there. So now remember the data sets in a different workspace than new workspace. All right, so do that, publish it. And then we'll go over to Power BI. I'm signed in as Michael on this one, so that's good. We'll switch workspaces over to new workspace and go to reports and I can see that report and that report runs, which is great. If I go back and I go to the data set tabs of this new workspace, you'll see a different icon for that data set. This is a shared data set. So the adventure works, you'll see it's got a link icon on it and that denotes a shared data set versus a data set that's in that actual workspace. Okay, this is great. So now I can build reports across data sets that I have build access to and then publish those reports to a different workspace and be able to use those reports. It's outstanding. What happens if that data set changes? Coming back to the original report where that data set comes from, I'm signed in as myself. So now I have access to the, the actual parent workspace or that app navigation workspace. And what I wanna do is I wanna change my calendar table. Right now it's a uh, calculated table based off of the calendar function. It's got a couple fields in there, but I wanna take it to the next level. And I'm gonna use the date template that Marco and Alberto have out on sqlbi.com. And then just to make sure everything is sorted correctly, I'm gonna take the month column, let's collapse that, go to modeling, sort by month number. Whoa, not short year. Ah. Month number, there we go. Stay with me, Power BI desktop. All right, everything's good, let's save it. Go back to the home and then we'll publish. Onto that app navigation workspace, select. It's gonna ask me if I wanna overwrite or replace that data set. Yes, I do. And we're published, that's great. Now let's go back. We'll go back to Power BI. I'm signed in as myself. Let's go and refresh this just to make sure. Go back to data sets. We'll see AdventureWorks here, it's still certified. And if we go back to manage permissions, I overwrote the data set, but it still maintains those permissions. So Michael's account still has build rights to this data set. And the report that was created off of that data set, let's check that out. So let's go back over to Power BI from Michael's perspective. We'll refresh again for good measure. Go to reports. This is the report that was based on that data set. I haven't done anything else with that report. And bam, it still works, right? So we can still work with that data set even if the data set changes underneath or it refreshes or something of that nature. The one thing to keep in mind is I'm referencing the month column of the calendar table and I'm referencing the total sales amount measure. Neither of those actually changed in the update that I did to the calendar table. Now, had I changed the calendar table and say month was renamed to month name, the visual would have broke because month name now is not being referenced, month is, and month doesn't exist in the calendar table. So if you do alter your schema, just understand that visuals you've used may break. But that's regardless of a shared data set, right? That's just how reports and data sets work. If you break the schema and it's no longer there, you're gonna get an error. But from a general perspective, if you update the data set, things should still work okay. And whatever build permissions that you had previously established will still be in effect. They don't get overwritten or reset. One thing you can also do as the owner of the given data set is you could come in and look at view related on that data set and you'll be able to see other workspaces that are referencing this data set. So we see this report build permissions. I can hover over that and I can see the workspace new workspace. So now I know who all is using this given data set. Let's talk about free users. So in this example, my free user is Jane Doe. And if I go into Power BI, one thing, we'll go into manage permissions. I added Jane Doe as a member of the app. So she has build access because she has access to the given published app. By default, as a free user, she can't use that app because it's a pro feature. If I backed this 
app navigation workspace with premium capacity, then Jane would be able to use and consume that app as a free user. So let's go see what this looks like from a Power BI desktop perspective. I'm logged in as Power BI in Power BI desktop as Jane Doe. So let me go to get data and we'll go to Power BI data sets. Now what we see is that Jane Doe has access to a bunch of data sets, but what she doesn't have access to is that certified data set for AdventureWorks. These other workspaces where I see these data sets, they're backed by premium capacity, whereas the AdventureWorks one is not. And so as a result, even though I've even though Jane's got build access to that data set, Jane can't actually use that data set to build reports on because it's not backed by premium capacity. If it were backed by premium capacity, Jane would see that given data set in this list. So by default, pro users will be able to take advantage of this. Free users will be able to consume and build content off of shared data sets if they have premium capacity backing those data sets. Now, the interesting thing to think about from a free user perspective is even though I'm a free user and it's backed by premium and I build rights, I can build that report off of that data set, but I can't publish it to an app workspace because publishing to an app workspace requires a pro license. If Jane was a viewer member of the app workspace, she could get into that app workspace, but can't publish content. So really she can only publish content to her personal my workspace. Just something to consider. Premium does enable someone with build rights to create those reports, but you still need a pro license to publish to an app workspace, regardless of whether premium capacity is there or not. Another question you may be thinking of is, all right, so I wanna do this, but can I do it in bulk? Like, is there a way to programmatically do this or to be able to do it across multiple data sets and provide build access out? And the answer to that is not today. At the record, as of the recording of this video, there's no APIs that are available to modify build permissions on data sets. And also there's no APIs to automate the publishing or updating of a given app that's published off of an app workspace. And there's nothing in the UI that's gonna allow you to do that in bulk either. That may change in the future, but again, as of the time of recording of this video, that is not the case. All right, build access, what did you think? Let me know down in the comments below if you're using it today and getting rid of those data silos. If you like this video, be sure to hit that big thumbs up button, smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome, and we'll see you in the next video.